What's up guys and welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be primarily auditory, so if you've got headphones, I would suggest plugging them in. As for the lights I have here in front of me today, these are more eye candy than anything else, so just the flashlights that I happen to have on hand at my dorm. They're the ones I took with me to college. So yeah, that aside, let's talk about today's topic, which is the state of the custom flashlight market. I'll be firstly covering what you need to understand purchasing a custom flashlight, the current problem with the market as I see it, and finally what I'd like to see going forward. I do think that a lot of what I have to say here today is applicable to the EDC game in general, but I'd rather not get too broad and would rather keep the discussion within the scope of a topic I'm knowledgeable about. For most, let's talk about what you need to know going into custom flashlights. I say quote unquote custom flashlights, but I'm speaking about expensive flashlights in general. To put things into perspective, there are many flashlights out there that will cost you well over a grand. Very few makers will design you a truly custom flashlight from the ground up, and most custom flashlights are custom in the sense that you have a very small say in the components, hardware, and the finish that goes into the torch. So for the sake of simplicity and for this video, I'm going to refer to them collectively as custom flashlights. First thing you need to understand about the custom world is that you are not necessarily paying for peak functional performance. By function, I mean the components themselves inside the flashlight that generate the light. I know this sounds counterintuitive, but I've said it before and I'll say it again in this video. It would be better to think of many custom flashlights as functional jewelry. A good number of the flashlights in the custom flashlight market will run you over grand, simply because the money isn't in the function, so much as it is in the craftsmanship and the material used. Custom makers use a variety of metals in flashlights, such as titanium, copper, brass, and even more exotic metals like Mokungain and Damascus. Clearly, these aren't the most practical choices of metal for a flashlight, but they're desirable because of their unique properties, be it functional or aesthetic. For example, this one here is titanium, this one here is aluminum, and this is another aluminum one. Aluminum is probably the most practical choice of metal for a flashlight, just generally speaking. This is another titanium one. Um, among enthusiasts, ED, uh, titanium is probably the second most popular because of just its unique properties as a metal. It's hypoallergenic, will never rust, highest strength to weight ratio of, well, not the highest strength to weight ratio, one of the highest, but yeah. Um, I'm not really a fan of copper and brass and those other fancy metals. I don't think they really serve a purpose, but they do have aesthetic um, qualities that a lot of people like. Likewise, custom makers put a level of detail in the machining and assembly of their flashlights that isn't even comparable to production flashlights. A good example of a production flashlight is this one here. This is indeed made by Surefire, which is a very, very good company amongst production flashlights, perhaps one of the best, but it is not even comparable to these other flashlights I have here. They all blow it away in terms of build quality and aesthetics. So yeah. On the opposite end of the spectrum, there are numerous budget flashlights that are functionally on par with or superior to custom flashlights. In fact, the budget flashlight world is synonymous with pushing the envelopes in terms of not only cost, but also functionality. This is really a stark disparity with the vast majority of products that emphasize upon the former, but not the latter. It's also an issue with the custom flashlight world that I'm going to elaborate on later. Although you generally have very little say in the minute nuances that make up a custom flashlight, custom flashlights are often designed from the ground up to be modified and user serviceable. So this sort of means being able to swap out the pill, which I'm going to show up here. This thing generally will screw out in a lot of custom flashlights so that you can screw in a new one in the case that the LED or driver which it houses fail. Um, on that note, all moving parts will eventually fail, and it's often an even simpler matter to switch to swap in a new switch, like the bone on back here. This one's a reverse clicky, a little bit harder to get out, but um, this one here uses a McClicky switch, and this one is extremely easy to get out, provided you have some needle nose pliers. It's a very user ser serviceable, and um, because of the build it for life nature of the most hosts, the shell of the flashlight itself. Uh, most custom flashlights will last your lifetime, provided you have replacement components, that is. In essence, custom flashlights appeal to consumers that appreciate something that's been handcrafted with the utmost attention to detail. In this respect, custom flashlight makers are quite literally artisans of machining and aesthetic design. A good majority of people are shocked by the cost of a custom flashlight, and to them I always make the apt comparison to the watch world, or any niche hobby really, to which the same holds true. If you just want a flashlight that can produce light, then you should be looking at budget and production flashlights. Um, you probably shouldn't even be looking at something like Surefire. This is built with a very intended use behind it, um, and it's not for most people. And conversely, if you want a heirloom quality tool that'll last you a lifetime, maybe you should consider a custom flashlight. A custom flashlight is certainly not for everyone, and this holds true for any luxury product, really. 
All right, now that I've gone over what I think one needs to understand going into the custom flashlight market, let's talk about the current problem with it. I'm going to address what I believe to be the current elephant in the room, and that's the utter lack of innovation and the perpetuation of the same much copied designs time and time again. I know that I'm overgeneralizing when I say this, but there's two types of custom flashlights, those that use a single emitter and those that use a triple LED setup. The former is the traditional orientation that pretty much everyone, even your average show, is aware of. It's basically the one used in this flashlight here, and this one here, as well as this one here. So just a traditional single LED setup that's been going for decades, honestly. And the latter, though, is an orientation that was pioneered in late 2010 by Max Customs. In case you were wondering, Max Customs is no longer in business and went rogue after stealing his customers' money. Regardless, the triple orientation was extremely progressive at the time because one, it looked wicked cool, and two, it allowed for much more output in Flood, which are apt for EDC. The format was largely dead for a while after Max Customs absconded, but was picked back up shortly after, which resulted in the so-called triple craze. Um, this became the predominant orientation, orientation in the custom market, and still is to this day, although the craze has died down somewhat. And this is the orientation I'm talking about. This flashlight, the Mech Torch, is probably the pinnacle of what the market has come to, honestly. It is titanium, it is running the triple LED setup, and it is actually at an insanely low price for what it is. There's a lot of value here, but it's just a, um, it's the zenith of the perpetuation that I'm trying to refer to in this video. Um, to echo a sentiment that I made earlier, the custom flashlight market is truly a niche one. Believe me when I say that there are people with collections easily worth tens of thousands of dollars. And as with any lucrative market, there are makers who want in. Custom makers know that the aforementioned people will buy whatever they pump out, as long as it's quality craftsmanship, of course, and they prey upon this foible. They have little incentive to innovate, and we've definitely seen the results of this. There's been so many new companies and makers in the last few years pumping out the same tired components with a new fancy host that I've lost count. Although I would posit that the triple market has slowed down somewhat, it's definitely still preeminent. This is predicated most by the insanely inflated secondary market values of torches from certain custom makers. It's this vicious cycle that has led to the disparity between custom flashlights and budget flashlights that I highlighted earlier. On the topic of budget flashlights, they have progressively gotten better and functionally superior too to custom flashlights and the simple answer to that is because they have competition. Um, simply put, budget light manufacturers have incentive to innovate. Their target consumer base isn't willing to buy their flashlights unless they introduce new functions and improve components. I won't deny that this has led to many useless gimmicks such as overtly programmable drivers, but budget flashlights have also beget many a diamond in the rough. It's really sad to say that the same can't be nearly said as much for the custom flashlight world in the last few years. Sure, there's been exceptions, but they are the far and few between. Um, maybe a good example of that is this flashlight here. This is the Boss 35 with the Lux RC 371D driver. This is probably the most advanced triple out there. It's as advanced as the um, platform is ever going to get. And I really don't see it for, foresee the um, platform getting any more advanced than this. And another exception I'm talking about is this flashlight here. This is the Synergy 1 made by Benjamin Freelux. And it's a good example of a very small amount of innovation that we've seen in the um, custom flashlight market. It's got the side-by-side -side AAA design. That's very, very unique out there right there, right now. And here's another good example. It's a small 10180 flashlight with a programmable driver by Gyorgi Kamenis. I can never say his name right, I'm sorry. But yeah, um, it's not my intention to marginalize custom makers in flashlights. There's nothing wrong with wanting to make money and being intelligent enough to target a lucrative customer base. And I'm well aware that there are many exceptions to what I've said, like those I've pointed out already, but I'm looking at the markets and trends I've seen holistically. On that note, I also want to talk about shifts in the consumer base. The consumer base and custom flashlight makers in general have migrated from the forums that used to dominate the hobby. These forums were called candle power forums and budget light forums. The forums reflected the parallel between more expensive custom flashlights and budget flashlights respectively. And collectively, they represented, and more than ever do they, concerted, thoughtful discussion on flashlights. While both still do exist as avenues of discussion for hobbyists, they're less active than ever, and the hobby has largely shifted to social media platforms. Social media is exemplified most by its fast pace, constant updates, and instant gratification.
There is no doubt that it has connected flashlight connoisseurs and EDC enthusiasts around the globe, more so than the traditional aforementioned forms ever could. But it has also left a new type of consumer in its wake as a result. And this isn't the good type of consumer. This is the consumer that has money, but doesn't have the basic knowledge to understand the product they're purchasing. This is the type of consumer that asks the most mundane of questions that they could easily find the answer to if they'd just taken a few moments to make a quick search. This is the type of consumer that begets drama because their fancy new custom flashlight stops working and they don't understand what a mode lockout is. Such consumers detract from the hobby as a whole and in fact perpetuate the vicious cycle that I outlined earlier. Once again, I am speaking in general terms. The good majority of flashlight enthusiasts I've conversed with on social media are extremely knowledgeable about the hobby, more, more so than myself in many cases, I might add, and they conduct themselves in a very admirable manner. It's the few outliers that have really ruined the experience for me. And so while social media has certainly brought merits to the custom flashlight world, it has also brought many new issues. Don't even get me started on the amount of scammers it's given a new avenue to. Let's talk about what I'd like to see going forward. At this point in the video, I hope I have outlined my general concerns with the state of the custom flashlight world. What it needs right now is a lot more innovation, and in a way, it needs to find its roots. As it stands, the custom flashlight market has mostly turned into glorified flashlight jewelry. I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing, and in fact, I like that the niche exists. It's brought many new people into the hobby, and it's gave way to a whole new market segment. It's completely connected to the um, greater EDC movement going on lately. But the custom art market also needs to see more progression on the opposite end of the spectrum, which is function. In the end, the consumer base will dictate what happens in the custom flashlight world. As more of the same, much copied designs are released by new makers, it will eventually lead to market saturation. People won't buy as many of their products or will tire of them altogether, and this is known as diminishing returns. As a result, some of these makers will realize that the competition isn't worth it and drop out of the game. And if they don't drop out, well, they're going to have to innovate if they want to stay in the game. That's the simple nature of supply and demand, and I really look forward to seeing where it takes the custom flashlight market in the future. To piggyback on what I was saying earlier about the new type of consumer that social media has beget, I really think that it comes down to being educated about the conventions of the market. By making more consumers cognizant of the role they play in the custom market, we can effectively shape the market for better, more innovative flashlights. Thank you for watching, and if this video was helpful, be sure to hit that like button and to subscribe.